Thanks, Mitch. I appreciate it, and uh, welcome everybody for uh, being here today. And uh, you know, and I guess uh, you know, uh, making it through the weather. You know, I, I think it, even last night talking to Mitch, we weren't sure if we could put this back on, but thankfully, you know, here in Oxford, we missed a lot of the, as you know, uh, frozen uh, precipitation, and uh, able to get you guys here and, and even get an inter squad game in this afternoon. Uh, Excited to have Mitch here, no, new, uh, uh, I keep saying sports information director, I apologize, I, uh, I think the correct term now is communications director, uh, but uh, we welcome, he welcome him here and uh, uh, excited that he's part of the program you know, with us. Uh, start off by saying that uh, super excited to announce, you know, once again, uh, we broke a, another season ticket record. So uh, uh, kudos um, to the, the marketing team here, uh, you know, the communications team, and of course our ticket office, over 8,000, you know, season tickets. Uh, just incredible and, uh, you know, great fan base that, you know, continues to buy tickets, show up to the games and uh, support uh, like no other program and uh, it makes it, you know, the greatest atmosphere, you know, in, in college baseball and uh, as uh, we we'll, might get asked a little bit later, uh, because of the 8,000 season tickets, because of the support, you know, there's, there's a, a vision uh, by Keith and his staff to uh, continue the expansion of the stadium and some, some different things and, and that's really because of the growth of the, the fan base and that we continue to sell tickets and when you sell tickets and you actually sell more tickets than you actually have seats. Uh, doesn't take a, a genius of a businessman to realize that you got to build some more seats. And so uh, they're in the process of doing that. It's, it's still in its infancy, uh, but I'm excited that it's important to them, that you, you work at a place that uh, your sport uh, is important. And, uh, you know, Keith uh, has always shown that. And uh, so we're excited about, you know, the future, you know, of our facility. Uh, with that, talking about the team, um, so I've said this a few times, and I think it might come across wrong, but it was somewhat of an uneventful fall for us in a sense that uh, it was kind of business as usual. And, uh, and that can happen, I think, when you have so many older guys return, so many veterans. And, uh, and so when I say uneventful fall, uh, it kind of went as planned. And I think sometimes as a coach, you know, that's, that's a good thing, you know, that uh, there wasn't many issues, uh, you know, Surely, you know, we want those good surprises, but sometimes with good surprises, uh, there's things that uh, go wrong. Uh, no really injuries to speak of coming out of the fall, you know, uh, other than, you know, normal uh, uh, bumps and bruises. Uh, but, but an uneventful fall where uh, the offense, you know, that was the number one offense in the Southeastern Conference last year just continued to, to swing well as we return, you know, basically the entire offense from last year, um, uh, even with you know, Tim being sidelined with the ACL rehab, uh, the offense just didn't, you know, uh, uh, miss, a, miss a step and, you know, continue to swing well, uh, which in turn made it tough, you know, on a, on a pitching staff that was, I think, trying to, you know, make, make a name for themselves. And, and so as well as we swung it, um, we probably swung it better than I would imagine that we would swing it. So I look back this morning just trying to put it in perspective. We played 268 innings in the fall. Uh, so when you look at perspective, uh, if you divide it by nine, that's almost, it's uh, almost 30 games, 29.7, you know, games to be exact. So if you played 30 games, you know, we hit 51 home runs. And so uh, that's a lot of homers. Uh, we stole 77 bases. Uh, so a lot of offense and, you know, that's nice. The problem is that you're on the other side of the ball as well. And so from a pitching standpoint, uh, we probably didn't pitch it as well as I would like or hope. Uh, but with that being said, some guys really stood out. Of course, Derek Diamond uh, led the pitching staff uh, with the least amount of runs given up. But the guy with the lowest ERA was a, a transfer, a grad transfer, and John Gaddis uh, from the University of Texas, Corpus Christi. He had a terrific fall. Uh, normal names that our fans will know, guys like Brandon Johnson and um, uh, Jack Doherty pitched well. But some newcomers, uh, Jack Washburn, a, a, a transfer from Oregon State, pitched really well. Hunter Elliott, true freshman from Tupelo High School, pitched, pitched really well. Uh, Drew McDaniel pitched great. 
great, uh, probably the second half of the fall. And so with all that offense, uh, you know, we felt good finishing the fall that um, we may have more depth on this staff or we do have more depth on this staff, uh, even missing Nikhazy, uh Broadway and Hoagland. Uh, overall as a staff, you know, we probably have more depth and more talent than, than we did a year ago. And with those guys, you know, those guys are a year older. Um, and we did pitch it well. When we talk about the uh, two scrimmages playing University of Alabama and uh, University of Arkansas, Little Rock, uh, I, I look back at those scrimmages and, and where against outside competition, not facing our hitters in the other dugout, you know, we pitched it really well. One of the things I think doesn't get mentioned, you know, in these types of settings, press conference, it just seems to be the uh, least sexy thing is defense. Um, but one of the things that I think is a, a goal of ours going in, we wanted to play better defense, you know, this year. And uh, not that we were poor last year, but uh, we were average. And you know, to, to be, be an elite team, and especially to help a pitching staff out, we, you know, we wanted to be able to catch it and throw it a little bit better. And I, and I think we did that this fall and improved, you know, defensively, you know, as a whole. And the old adage, you know, a lot of times when you look at your defense, how how how. How are you built up the middle? You know, where are you in those positions uh, that are you know, the premier defensive positions? Catcher uh, in the middle infield, second base, shortstop, and of course in center field. And when you look at you know, Hayden Dunhurst behind a plate and then up the middle, Peyton Chatnier and uh, Jacob Gonzalez uh, in the middle infield, and then uh, TJ McCants or Justin Bench in center field, we're as strong as we've ever been here in this program in my 22 years up the middle. And so I think we'll really defend it well. Um, and then one of the things I, I briefly mentioned, but I thought we did a great job, uh, and another goal is to be uh, more productive on the base pass. Uh, to to, to not just stolen bases, obviously that's the easy, I think, metric or, or stat to look back at. Uh, but beyond that, to, to take the extra base, to be able to read balls in the dirt, to, to be able to move up, you know, bases. Uh, last year, I, I don't think we were uh, as good as we could be. Uh, some reasons for that, you know, I think a reason that you know we kind of put the the parking brake on Peyton Chatnier, who should be one of our base, best base dealers, but after the first month of the season and he tore tore his hamstring, we just played it really careful for him. The rest of the year and uh, didn't allow him to run. Um, but another year of experience for Justin Bench and TJ McCants, who are probably our, uh, our best ba base stealing threats, and they continued this fall. You know, uh, all three of those guys running really well uh, this fall, stealing bases. And as I mentioned, in approximately 30 games, we stole 77 bases against maybe the best catching trio that we've ever had here. And so it's not like they took advantage of catchers that couldn't throw uh, guys that. Kind of improved, you know, our game as a as a whole. Uh, uh, on the injury front, you know, Tim Elko's you know been back. Um, been released to be able to go, you know, full speed. Looks 100% out there. Uh, I was even a little shocked a few weeks ago. I told Tim, pulled him to the side, watched him uh, do it during an early work portion of our uh, practice, where it's just defense, and watched him move around at first base. And you know, uh, easy to look at him and not realize, you know, you know what, the injury that he had last year, and of course surgery, and how much work and effort that he put in, and Josh Porter, our trainer, has put in to get him back out on the field. Uh, but man, he looks amazing out there and of course in the first weekend as Tim can do um, four for nine with two home runs in the first weekend so uh, pretty pretty good start for him and of course Max Chofi uh, is still you know on a, on a rehab front and uh, uh, should be you know able to pitch this year uh, likely not to be uh, until you know mid to late March uh, I don't know it off the top of my head I meant to bring it in here you know the, the actual date but of course the the, the last month the rehab is critical to his bullpens and see where he is. But uh, certainly, he's hit all his marks, you know, through the the throwing protocol and um, is, is is ready to pitch, you know, this year. Um, I'll go around the the, the diamond. Uh, just to give you, you know, the names, it's the, probably the easy part is to start with the position players. Um, and I don't know a year when I've gotten ready for the press conference and tried to write down names. Uh, there's always, you know, some question marks this year. Uh, uh, not as many question marks. You know, uh, some guys have played really well, and the guys that, that we will we'll assume will start on February 18th are Kevin Graham in left field, um, T.J. McCants. Or Justin Bench in center field. 
uh, in right field is one of those kind of uh, you know by committee or open up uh, or own, uh, very open at this point and uh, Hayden Leatherwood and uh, Kemp Alderman Kemp had a tremendous fall really proud of him uh, a kid that as you know you know was going to redshirt last year we pulled him off the bench had a couple really big at bats and you know big home run against LSU here on a Sunday that you know won the game for us but a guy that's really worked with Mike Clement our hitting coach and has improved tremendously uh, and uh, think that he's going to be a big part of the offense this year so Leatherwood and Alderman and Wright at third base uh, bench uh, our only first team all SEC candidate you know uh, you know in the infield uh, you know Justin had a terrific year for us this year and I think uh, could play center could play third could play anywhere in the infield to be honest with you but I think we'll start off the first weekend you'll probably see him with a start in center and, and a start at third for sure uh, and uh, Reagan Burford you know, uh, junior college transfer that was here in the fall last year, transferred to Northwest Florida, and then uh, back, uh, you know, here uh, gives us some depth in the infield and, and had a really good fall offensively and has a chance to start at third base. Uh, shortstop, uh, you know, national freshman of the year, Jacob Gonzalez returns, uh, and you know, excited. You know, to watch you know him just continue to get better every single day. And Peyton Chatney at second base, as I mentioned, also, uh, and then Tim Elko at first base behind the plate. Hayden Dunhurst, uh, and so not a lot of surprises uh, from the DH spot. Um, you know, Ben Van Cleve, you know, had a had a really good fall for us. Calvin Harris, um, uh, who's also a catcher, as you know, coming off arm surgery last year, I think, is uh, another candidate for the the DH spot, and um, and. And some of the other guys that don't find their uh, position, you know, as one of the starters in the field, obviously could be one of the DHs. Uh, from the pitching side, um, on February 18th, we'll start Derek Diamond uh, on that Friday uh, afternoon against Charleston Southern. After that, um, we're not sure. Uh, you know, right now it's still a lot of competition going on for those last two spots on Saturday and Sunday starters and um, certainly could be fluid through the first four weeks. And as I mentioned a few minutes ago, more depth, I think more options, more high end, uh, uh, you know, uh, ability than, than we had last year. Guys like Jack Doherty and Drew McDaniel and Brandon Johnson have all pitched really, really well and I think are candidates to be, you know, weekend starters for us. Uh, uh, and then the transfers that I've mentioned already, two of them, Jack Washburn and John Gaddis, uh, and uh, Dylan DeLucia, another uh, junior college transfer, another one from Northwest Florida uh, that's pitched really well, pitched great last weekend, pitched really well at the end of the fall, uh, along with uh, a couple freshmen uh, that, that pitched really well this fall. I uh, mentioned Hunter Elliott and, uh, from, from Tupelo High School and uh, Riley Maddox from Jackson Prep. Um, and then, as I said, you know, Chofi's uh, uh, rehab is going really well, and I see him being a, you know, a part of that that bullpen, you know, as the season progresses. So, uh, with that, I'll open it up to you, uh, to your questions. Well, obviously they're, they're 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 different. You know, one's a, a big power right-hander, one's a, a left-hander, but a little undersized. But um, Gaddis, you know, probably from a, a fan standpoint, uh, you know, looks a little more like Doug Nikhazy in a sense that uh, body size, attacks hitters. Uh, he's got a really good fastball that plays up. Uh, he's not going to light up the radar gun. He's going to throw the ball in the upper 80s, low 90s. But the uh, you know the the fastball's got some swing and miss to it. A uh, good breaking ball, really good changeup. Um, great competitor, a guy that was uh, Southland Conference Pitcher of the Year last year, and so he's used to winning, used to having success, and you know to to add an older guy like that to your staff, obviously, you know that's a plus for us. And and you know it's not a secret we don't have a lot of left-handed arms, so you know pitching from that side obviously is big for us as well. You know uh, Jack, you know Washburn, it's a kid that you know played a, at a you know one of the best programs in the country in Oregon State, and uh, uh, you know also played on the USA national team this summer and so a guy that's used to playing in you know major college baseball uh, you know playing on a big stage uh, big power right hander really good fastball really good breaking ball um, pitched mostly out of the bullpen uh, for Oregon State last year and I think you know uh, certainly got an opportunity to, to be a weekend starter for us you talked about 
both of those guys, and they both had good years last year. But coming, you know, to the SEC, how well do you think they can adjust to playing in a conference that has so much offense returning this year and the best conference in the country? And two, how much do you think you're going to kind of rely on those two guys this year? Well, I think we're going to rely on them tremendously. You know, the you know the the back part of your question. Nobody really knows the first part of your question. You know, uh, I think you know some of that's you know physical and some of that's mental and and some of that's just a hurdle that everybody has to get through. But these are confident guys. These are guys, as you mentioned, had you know success you know uh, in college and in high school. Uh, and they're older guys. You know these. Uh, you know, and I think that's one of the things. With, you know, for, especially from a baseball standpoint, not to turn this into a uh, transfer portal. Uh, press conference, but you know when you when you look to that, sometimes I think in baseball, you know that's the help is that they're older. They're, the help is that they've they've done some of this. So as I mentioned earlier about Jack, you know pitching in the in the Pac-12 and uh, pitching in, you know with Team USA and 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 John uh, being the conference pitcher of the year. Uh, these are guys that uh, you know have had success, and even though it hasn't been in the SEC. Really, nobody's had that unless you pitched in the SEC. So you can't usually use that, uh, or you can't use that. I think as a as a negative. It's just something that they haven't done yet. But we, we think they're going to be big parts of what we're trying to do this year. There's so little separation between the potential starters on, on the mound. How do you sort of balance giving those guys opportunities and sample sizes versus you know making sure you give kind of everybody a shot? To yeah, and I, and I think it's it's a, it's a delicate balance. I think last year I did a poor job of. Uh, not the starters necessarily, but with the bullpen and trying to find the right guys. And uh, we had so many guys at one time I looked up and it was early in the season and you know we had like 19 guys or 20 guys that had stats. And uh, when I used the term had or phrase that they had stats, meaning they pitched. And so you know when you're playing four times a week and you're pitching 19 guys, uh, there's a lot of one innings, one innings, one innings, and that's not a great, not necessarily a sample size uh, and uh, hard to judge one way or the other, but it's also, I don't think, benefits them, you know, to where they get opportunities to uh, pitch out of jams, to show what they can do, can they extend and, and uh, pitch more than an inning, and, and what, you know, where their role's going to be. So I say that first, where it's not the easiest thing. Um, uh, but with that being said, I think you know all of these guys that I've mentioned can pitch or have pitched out of the bullpen. They certainly can do that. We'll make the best choice that we can. We talked about it, Coach Lafferty and I, this morning, that at, at, at some point you make a decision and you go with the three, but just because they're starting against uh, uh, Charleston Southern doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to pitch the next week against VCU or Central Florida or uh, they're going forward. Um, we've had years where you know on opening weekend those three guys went you know, the entire season, and it doesn't necessarily mean your team struggles that way, but there's times where guys pitch better than others. There's times where injuries or what have you uh, change that rotation. And so uh, I think sometimes a fall and an early spring like this when there's so much competition is a good thing. I think it's a healthy thing. And so uh, just because they don't start, you know, because let's face it, there's only three guys that are starting open in weekend, just because they don't start doesn't mean that they won't start at some point. And so how do you, as you use the phrase, and I used it because you used it, the sample size, uh, we've seen it. We've seen it, you know, I've seen it years from, gosh, 15, 17 years ago. Will Klein had started in a bullpen, became a starter. Scott Biddle was, you know, the greatest closer we ever had, and we made him a starter, and he just rolled through it. TJ Beam, I mean, you know, just because you start in a pen or just because you have had success in the pen, um, a lot of times, if you can get them out, you can get them out. And uh, it doesn't matter if it's the first inning or the ninth inning. So, With, uh, with Derek's growth, like, uh, have you seen him add or anything new or different? Or is he just kind of becoming a more consistent version of the guy who's been last year? Yeah, you know, one of the things I, I credit Derek is I think he just wants to always improve. He's always looking to get better, and and uh, unlike you know some guys in that 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 age, right at uh, 19 to 22 years old, it's not just about velocity. I think he realizes that he's got the ability to run the ball up there in the upper 90s, uh, but he wants to pitch, you know, and to to pitch and to be effective. You know, he realizes that he's got to you know 
locate his fastball. That can be you know super overpowering at times, but to locate it better, to be able to mix two breaking balls in there, change up, work on his you know, uh, defending the steal and his pickoff move uh, to his body and nutrition and, and so on. And so you know I think he's really mature. Uh, one of the things that I will say about Derek and Drew and some of those others that I think fall into this category, uh, so it's kind of a segue going off your question, is they, uh, these are guys that they're in their junior year, they're in their third year, but last year was really their freshman year. You know, Derek, even though he pitched, then he was the Sunday starter in 2020, you know, he never pitched an SEC game. You know, he played four games against non-conference teams and pitched well and, and you know, did what you, know, uh, you would hope that he would do as a freshman, but he didn't get the benefit that a guy like Gunnar Hoagland did where you, know, you can kind of get your, 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 your nose bloodied a little bit in the SEC and, and do you survive and do, does that experience and that getting, beat, you know, getting beaten up every once in a while, does that make you better? Well, I think you know, the great ones, it does make better. You know, some guys aren't strong enough to get through that. And uh, so you know, when you look at Derek, when you look at Drew, you know, some of, I think, uh, their, their, their positives are awesome from last year, but some of the things that they struggled with or games that they had difficulty with, that's to happen. There's not many freshmen that run out there, and even though they were considered sophomores, uh, there's not too many guys that run out there the first time. We realized that we had a ladies' forum here last week, and uh, uh, one of the group was an older group. It's Tim Elko, but it was with Chatagnier and a handful of guys that their household names had been in the program. This is the third year, and, and they asked them what was their favorite venue you know, to go to in the SEC. Well, everybody but Elko had only been to the five schools because now, even though they've been here three years, they, they didn't get that 2020 year, they didn't get to go to it. So they've only been to you know, five schools out of the 14. So you know, it was kind of a difficult question. And I think that just kind of you know, you know, sh shows you that you know, it's, uh, there's, there's, you know, there's a maturation period. Yeah, it's uh, it's hard to quantify, but there's no doubt it's a it's a big deal. You know, uh, arguably the, the the best catcher we've ever had. You know, behind the plate, and that's saying a lot. We've had some really really good guys back there, but the way that he handles pitchers, the way that uh, uh, he defends the the running game, uh, the way that he receives and. Uh, uh, keeps balls into the strike zone and makes pitches uh, that are close look so good. Um, he's terrific. You know, he's a guy that's going to catch in the big leagues. And uh, and I, I'll let Derek and the other guys, you know, speak on what you know, you know trying to read their mind. But you know, I, if I was a pitcher, I'd like to pitch to him. It's done well, you know, uh, and and both him and Knox, you know, had really good falls, and you know, I'm proud of it. Uh, you know, the falls that they both had continue to improve, and uh, uh, Cal's, you know, th you know, throwing. I mean, he looks like he did, you know, before he hurt his arm, and uh, which I think is the biggest thing. And uh, you know, like I said, uh, you know, Hayden will get you know most of the pub, which he should and deserves, but uh, we got two pretty good guys, you know, behind him. He, he continues to work in the infield. I, I, I think um, um, not that he couldn't play third, but I think uh, uh, you know he's probably more suited for the middle, you know, at, at second base or, or shortstop. Um, uh, it's one of those things that happens in college baseball where ends up, you know, probably his best friend and Jacob Gonzalez. You show up and you know, uh, you know, his career, you know, in the infield may be different if if Jacob wasn't here and signed out of high school. But uh, he's a super athlete. I think the scouts, you know, realize that he's a draft eligible sophomore, and you know, he's a he's a kid that you know has played infield in the in the scrimmages, and we'll continue to do that. I think uh, one, it gives us you know more depth and more options. Uh, two, in fairness to him, who knows that 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 may be the thing that he does when he when he gets to you know professional. Baseball. Mike, you, you guys were one game away from Omaha last year. You have this whole offense basically coming back. You took advantage of the transfer portal, and, and you have some good young arms that showed some bright spots last year. Do you think it's realistic for Ole Miss baseball fans to have an Omaha expectation for this year's team? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think as a coach, and uh, obviously I'm a little uh, partial 
uh, you know, to, to, to that. But, uh, you know, I would think that you would, you would always have that expectation. You know, and it's not a secret. We haven't been since 2014, but we've been really close. And, uh, you know, it's one game, and uh, you got to play a little bit better. You know, you got to pitch it a little bit better. you got to swing it a little bit better. But uh, I, I see no reason, you know, why this team, uh, you know, doesn't have an opportunity to get to Omaha and, and, and be the first team in, in a few years to get there. Uh, I think we have all the pieces. You know, obviously the offense is there, but on the mound, uh, I think uh, we will surprise some people, and I think we will pitch you know better than you know most people you know uh, probably expect us to. And and I say that just because um, it's easy. I think sometimes when you sit back and you look at the names and Elko and Graham and Bench and McCants and Gonzalez and all the names that have had success, but I also think back to two years ago in 2020, uh, the pandemic year where you know we got off to a great start, but we had lost Dillard and Zabowski and Kessinger and you know this great offense from the year before, and nobody really knew where the the, the offense was going to come from. People forget that's that's the nature of sports. It's the nature, especially of college athletics. You know, uh, if you're going to consistently win, uh, which we hope we're one of those programs that consistently wins, that there's going to be times where you may know not know the names and the faces quite yet, or maybe you know them but they haven't quite had that success. But there's a reason for it because because Nikhazy pitched the big innings last year, and and it was his turn to do that. It was uh, you know Gunner's turn to do that, and Broadway's turn to do that. Well, you know now it's somebody else's turn. You mentioned defense. How much of that is just individual emphasis on getting better in line of construction versus you know what you're putting out there from an improvement defensive? Well, I think it's both. I mean, that's a tough question, but I think it's both. Uh, uh, but you know, to watch, you know, uh, and some of it's just maturing you know some of it you know uh, one of the things i've said a lot is you know so much has been made of J jacob's year last year uh but really Kyle probably could from an offensive standpoint to hit in the mid 300s and you know hit all those home runs at RBIs and basically bat 2-3 you know the entire year on a really good offensive team but not many people mention his defense and you know he played every game at shortstop you know at you know the most difficult position and a lot of pressure at that position and uh, and he did it well he, he did it as well as you know any freshman we've ever had I know he wants to do better and the expectation is he'll play better but when I look back at the, the great ones there's not too many freshmen that went out and played every single day uh, and and played like he did defensively but I know that's one of his goal uh, goals individually and I think collectively as a coach you know we're also looking at big picture, right? We're looking that, you know, can we shut down runs? Can we do some things, not just team defense and double cuts and that, those types of things, but collectively as a defense, can we play better and play an elite defense? Can we play in that 978, close to 980 range to where you just don't give up runs? You're, you're going to catch all the balls out there and you're going to defend the steal. And, you know, um, you know when, you, when you have a guy behind the plate like Dunhurst and you got the infielders that we return, uh, we, sh we should. We should. What's the scene from Burford? Is that what did you sort of see a year ago when he was here from the fall? Was there a lot of maturation since then? Or is it the same? Yeah, I, I just why very mature approach offensively. You know, uh, he's. Uh, you know, a guy that's a little different, I think, from what our fans, you know, he's he's not, you know, Elko or Graham, and he's not hitting balls out into the student section, but just a great approach where he's going to be a tough out. Uh, he, he can run. Uh, he can handle the bat. Um, and so we're going to need that, you know, because, you know, we do have some guys in the middle that can swing. Uh, you know, and one of the goals also that I didn't mention is to, 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 to cut down the, you know, some of the swing and miss, you know, that we had last year. I'm not a, you know, uh, a big uh, strong Strikeout guy in the sense that um, you know uh, we know that sometimes when you put big guys in the lineup that hit home runs, you're going to have a little more swing and miss. That's kind of the trade-off. And uh, uh, but you know you got to be careful not to have too much. And I think last year we we uh, bordered on that too much, where you know we we'd like to cut that down. I know that's been one of the focuses for Coach Clement. They certainly did that this fall. And you know guys like Burford in the lineup, I think you know help that cause. Mm. Yeah, um, terrific. You know, Carl Lafferty's the most tenured coach, uh, assistant coach in the, in the Southeastern Conference, been with us since 2006 in some role, right? Uh, of course, Mike Clement's been here since 2015. Um, and 
yeah, when you talk about you know the two main guys, uh, not to mention Chris Cleary has been here for you know a handful of years and the operations guys. Uh, from a coach's head coach's standpoint, man, it's much smoother, much easier. But if it's easier for me and smoother for me, you can only imagine what it is for the players. Right? It's not learning a whole new system. Uh, it's not learning a whole new offensive system or philosophy or even coaches' techniques. Right? Everybody's different. Everybody's got different personalities. And I'm fortunate. You know, I've had some great coaches here, as you know, uh, that have gone on to be great coaches, uh, head coaches at other programs. But uh, I don't know if I've ever collectively, and I mean that. I know coaches say that, but man, I'm, I'm really blessed. These guys are terrific, and to have you know uh, Clem and Laugh here, uh, you know, make make us a lot better and, and make my job a lot easier. Letting off that a little bit, does that make it easier to accept the Team USA thing? Because you got the portal and the yeah. summer going on, but you can trust. Yeah. I'll tell you, I was I was scared to death as an assistant in 2013 uh, just because um, I don't know if you realize it. I'm kind of hands on as a head coach, uh, and uh, and so to, to to be able to you know to be out of the country to be gone, and it's not that long. Yeah, you know, this year's tour uh, will be less than three weeks, and uh, and so. Uh, Heck, that's just a fishing trip for Kiffin, right? So, uh, no, I'm teasing. Uh, I shouldn't have said that. Um, but for us, it's it's you know it's 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 a tough thing, and it's right in the middle of recruiting. And um, and but to have guys like that, you're exactly right. It, it uh, we've done it one time, uh, and they handle it terrific. You know, matter of fact, I think you know uh, that was probably the summer. Maybe it helped because I think that led into that 2016 class was, you know, the number one ranked recruiting class in the country. So maybe Laugh and Clem could, you know, pull one of those out again. That would be good. What have you seen kind of click for Kent since the fall? You said he had that hot fall. The, the biggest thing is to to be able to uh, work on his approach. I think you know some of it we talk about is just maturation and confidence, and some of it's just I think approach and and worked with Coach you know Clement where you just there's just a lot less swing and miss, uh, uh, a lot more. Um, uh, you know, swinging at balls in the zone. Uh, last year, he just he would get himself in bad counts, and um, and and again, some of that, like I said, is just being a young guy and you know wanting to do well, and and uh, and at times emotionally maybe not handling it the best. Uh, but but this year, he he looks like a different player. I'm excited for him. Uh, that's not to just put it all on him. I mean, it's it's you know it's only his second year, and he didn't have a ton at bats last year. But just proud of you know uh, I wanted to mention him because just proud of the way that. You know, he he worked this fall, and uh, in the fall that he had, to put himself in position to to help us and be a big piece. You know, f you know, for this lineup. How special can can Jacob be? And I mean, is it even possible for him to surpass the numbers that kind of he put up last year at such a young age? You know, somebody asked me that, and and that's the unfair thing of sports, right? Once you do well, the expectation is, you know, what's next, or you know, do you hit 400 now? Do you hit, you know, 20 home runs? And uh, and I think Jacob's smart enough that you can't just look at it that way, right? You just got to go out and play and look at certain areas of your game. If it's defensively, if it's, you know, to cut down strikeouts, if it's to hit the ball, the whatever that is for you to try to, you know, improve that way. Uh, the stats are the stats, you know, but uh, uh, now he may answer differently. Maybe there is a goal to hit three you know, 375, but I, I think, you know, probably the best road to success is to, to put it in perspective and just say that I want to prove this, these parts of my game, you know, uh, versus, you know, some expectation uh, from a reporter from Columbus to say that I'm supposed to hit, you know, a certain amount to say that I did improve. I, I don't, I think if, if he could put up the same numbers he did last year, I think we'd be real happy. You know, I don't. I don't look at it that way. I think my job's always to to, to, to look at ways to motivate them. To you know, to, I think to encourage them to 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 look and see things that may they may not look at. Um, you know, uh, but at the end of the day, I think you know, um, you know, my job is to get them to to play the best that they can play. And sometimes that's motivation. Sometimes that's kicking them in the rear. Sometimes that's showing them you know, what, what they can do or what we're doing now and what we shouldn't do. So it's a lot of different things. But I don't, I don't necessarily think it's just giving a motivational talk in the outfield or showing a motivational video. Um, but I do think almost in reverse is you know, not that they would get complacent, that sometimes you take for granted 
Um, and we don't want that. That was kind of a challenge uh, to some of the leaders yesterday that you don't want to just take for granted that we're going to have a good year. You don't want to take for granted that we're going to have a good offense. You don't want to take for granted. You want to do the things that help you have that offense, to have that team, have that leadership. You know, we, uh, you know, to me, the focus is to make sure that you're doing the things that you need to do every single day, uh, so you can have the the days that you want to have, right? Um, and uh, that's what we're trying to do in the next couple weeks is, you know, to not look at February 18th, but uh, you know, to look at each day and how can we improve each day to be the best baseball team that we can be. Mike, given the injuries and everything that you had that went on last year, uh, was last year one of your better coaching jobs individually? Absolutely. Um, I, I, I joke, Parrish, that, that's for you guys to judge. Uh, I don't look at it that way. I will say that uh, it, it's the most proud that I've ever been you know, of a, of a team. And because of that, because there were so many times where uh, when you have those adversities, we're human, right? And it doesn't matter if you're a reporter or you're a fan or you're a coach or a player, you feel those and you go, wow, how are they going to recover from this? How are they going to be able to bounce back from this? And we're not just talking one. We're not just talking about losing a quarterback, which is huge, right? You know, that's like losing your Friday night starter, you know, but, you know, you're talking about losing your, your best hitter, you know, uh, for, for a month and not sure if he's ever coming back. And, you know, the first month we lose a, our second baseman and our closer uh, and Max Chofi. And it just seemed that you know, we lost Doug, people forgot, we lost Doug Nikhazy for two weeks, you know, you know, the, the star conference play. It just seemed, you know, like every three or four weeks, you know, we got kicked in the gut. Uh, and to their credit, you know, they just continued to, to bounce back, to, to show that grit, to show that uh, uh, resilience, and, uh, and to have the year that they had, you know, to win 18 conference games, to win 45 regular season games, and to put yourself in that position, uh, to, to be one game from Omaha. Yeah, uh, what, what a disappointing finish, but, you know, I don't know if I've ever been more proud you know, of any team in the 22 years than uh, that team because they went through a lot and uh, and almost you know made it to, you know to Omaha.